Greetings and welcome to another Daily Walk. Well, today we want to talk a little bit more about this parable of the sower. We talked about this in the parable series last week. We're going to talk a little bit more about that last faithful seed in the parable study this week. But I want to look at those two difficult seeds today. And uh, those two difficult seeds, of course, are the seed that is thrown among the thorns and the seed that is thrown in shallow soil. Because there is some discussion, are these saved people or are they not? And that's the question I want to address. Now, I talked in the, a little bit more detail about this in the book Testing and Temptations, but I wanted to spend a little bit more time today. So to refresh you about this, this is in the parable of the sower, which is found among other places in uh, Matthew 13. And he says, and he spoke many things in parables saying, behold, the sower went out to sow and he sowed some seeds that fell upon the road and the birds came up and ate them up. Others fell on the rocky places. There they did not have much soil, and immediately they sprang up because they had no depth of soil. But when the sun had risen, they were scorched, and because they had no root, they withered away. Others fell among the thorns, and the thorns came up and choked them out, and others fell on good soil and yielded a crop that is a hundred, some sixty, and some thirty. He has ears to hear, let him hear. And so we talked about the, the two that are easy to deal with are the one that falls in the rocky soil. It never takes the root. They never accept the gospel. They are simply not saved. Very easy to deal with. The other one is the one that falls upon good soil and very easy to deal with. It's, it's very clear they're saved. They have fruit and dealing with repentance. They have, they have all, of these, all of these things uh, going for them that, uh, that would definitely indicate that they are saved. But what about those two other ones? Some say, well, they are saved. Now, if you believe in the perseverance of the saints, and I believe that the Bible teaches that through and through, you might say, well, see, they're saved. They can never be lost. The question is, were they really saved to begin with? Now, there is one verse in Matthew 7 that talks about uh, a good tree cannot produce bad fruit, nor a bad tree cannot produce good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Now, that's some place some people may go to. I don't want to go there specifically in Matthew 7 because the entire context of Matthew 7 is in dealing with false teachers. We don't want to deal with false teachers. We want to deal with false believers. But there are some passages of Scripture that are actually quite telling. One of these is in Luke chapter 3. Now, this is in the, uh, the area of John the Baptist. So John the Baptist is coming and he is preaching repentance. And what we see in Luke chapter 3, starting in verse 8, Therefore bear fruits, keeping in repentance, and do not begin to say to yourselves, We have Abraham for our father. For I say to you that these stones, from these stones, God is able to raise up children for Abraham. Indeed, he says in verse 9, Indeed, the axe is already laid at the root of the trees, so that every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. So that is definitely a person that's looking at salvation. So this is, of course, John's baptism, the baptism of repentance, turning aside from the old life and turning to the new. Whoever does not have this baptism of repentance, whoever does not repent of the sin in their life, the axe is already laid at the fruit the roots and that tree is cut down and thrown in the fire. That's the exact context that we have. Can you go in, hear the gospel of Jesus Christ, say, I believe, follow through with it for a week or two and then fall away and never show up again at a meeting, never again read your Bible, never again have anything to do with the discourse of Jesus Christ? You can, but you're not necessarily saved. Because every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. This indicates that they are not actually saved. Uh, there is a very similar sentiment that is found in John 15. And uh, if you remember in John 15, this is a fascinating verse because what it has to do with is, again, this being in Christ, this surviving in Christ, this living in Christ, doing the things that are needed to be saved. And it says here in uh, John 15, I am the true vine and my father is the vine dresser. And every, every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that bears fruit, he prunes so that it may bear more fruit. 
You are already clean because of the word which I've spoken to you. Abide in me and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine, so neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit. For apart from me you can do nothing. If anyone does not abide in me, not abiding in Christ as an unsaved person, if anyone does not abide in me, he is thrown away as a branch that dries up, and they gather them and cast them into the fire, and they are burned. So looking at this context here, looking at what is a saved person, looking at what is the true mark of a Christian, it is going to be a person who casts off their old life, who repents of the old ways, who turns to Jesus and abides in his teaching abides in his life, abides in his rest, and does the things that we are commanded to do. Preach the gospel, to love all people, to serve him. And that is really the, the point. And so going back to this parable here, we have these two seeds. We have the seed that shows up on shallow soil. This is a person who hears the gospel and really loves it. And that's when it says the sun rises, this is defined as Jesus explains it later. This is persecution. They, in our modern vernacular, this is a guy who, who's like, wow, this Jesus is awesome. And he, he really believes it for a moment. And he runs out, tells all of his drinking buddies, and they all ridicule him and line up a bunch of shots for him. Now he has a decision to make. Do I keep these friends and continue on in this lifestyle? Or do I say, you know what, this is important to me and I'm just not going to continue on in this lifestyle. I'm going to repent of this lifestyle and walk away and find better things to do with your time. This is that person who has chosen to drink the line of shots. They have chosen to walk away from the church to keep that old fellowship as dog returns to its vomit, as the Proverbs happens to say. And so this is the seed that is not saved because while it heard it, while it had this initial response, it did not abide in Christ. This is not true, genuine salvation. This is a response to the general call without having the effectual call transform our heart. That's the first of these two difficult seeds. The second is the seed that is cast in among the thorns. They are raised up. They seem to have more abiding. They seem to be surviving. But there's all of these other things that choke it out. And it chokes out. It takes the nutrients. This is distraction. This is following Christ initially, but then getting distracted by the entertainment, distracted by all of the things that are not Christian. And we're not saying, hey, you got to never do anything but show up in the church meeting. I don't preach that gospel. Okay, but what the gospel I do preach is the one that says the first and most important thing is Jesus Christ. Do you sacrifice things for the cause of Christ or does Christ get sacrificed so you can do other things? That is this seed. It's the distractions of the world, the, the following after the wealth, the following after the things of the world. That is what is, is at mind there. So taking these things together, we have the easy to deal with seed. We have the difficult to deal with seeds. So these two seeds, I look at all of this. I look at the surrounding context of the scripture, and this is a, this is a seed that is not bearing fruit. It is cast, cut down and thrown into the fire. This is not a saved individual. So if you want to be a saved individual, accept the gospel of Jesus Christ. Hear that we are sinners. We are sinners. And then hear that there's nothing we can do in that sin except turn to Jesus Christ and then repent of the sin in our life. Turn back and follow Jesus Christ instead. Turn back and follow Jesus Christ instead. Literally, just turn back. Repent of the old ways. But this means transformation. This means you are going to have to give up some of your friends. Not because you don't want to see them anymore, but because they don't want to see you anymore. Because Jesus is more important than the bar stool. This is that you're going to give up and you're going to sacrifice some of the greater comforts for the purpose of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And in that, you're going to find the most tremendous blessings you will ever find as you truly turn to Christ and see he transforms you. So that is our daily walk today. Thanks for coming along. I did mention the book Testing and Temptations where I go into more detail about this. You can find that book anywhere where you buy books online. You can also pick it up from ourwalkinchrist.com. So thanks for coming along and I hope that you enjoy your daily walk.
in our Lord.